Hello and welcome to a second installment of Fierce Momentum, the weekly video series for aspiring web developers. Last week we took a look at the web fundamentals and we went over some tips, tricks, and hints for web development using Google products and services that are available for free. We looked at a few different services. We looked at Google Trends, we looked at Page Speed and the Insights, we looked at Google Sites, and we went over a few different services that Google offers which allow web developers and web designers to enhance their skills and to build with the best practices and everything that we looked at was free. They have a website developers.google.com forward slash products where they actually alphabetize all of the products that they offer. So if you can see here AdMob Ads, Google AdWords, AdWords API, Google actually offers hundreds of products. Google Cloud, SQL, Custom Search, Drive. So Google offers a lot more than just Gmail and Google Drive and, and things like that. They literally offer a ridiculous number of products and services. A lot of their services are just coming out and or about to be released. They're in either alpha or beta testing but they offer a crazy number of awesome products and services that we're going to want to take advantage of when we're building and testing and designing our sites. One thing that we're going to look to at today is the developer tools, which if you are in Chrome, you can right click on a site and click inspect. It will bring up Chrome's developer tools. Now this is not specific to Chrome. Firefox has developer tools. Safari has their developer tools as well. Um, I'm going to be using Chrome because the entire premise of this video is how we can persist changes from the browser to our source files. So what we're going to be doing is making changes to see how they look and then usually when you refresh the page the changes go away. So let's take a look at that so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so just to take a look at what we're doing here, let me show you how I brought this up. We have a folder here, book site, which contains all of the files for the website. So you can see here we have the index.html, the JavaScript, and CSS, and font awesome icons, and everything like that. So what I'm going to do is right click and open with. Google Chrome Canary, which is Google's browser specifically made for development. Like I did on the other page, I'm going to click an element and I'm going to I'm going to choose inspect. It's going to bring up the dev tools and it's going to show me exactly where that element is on the page. So you can see I changed this to more info and buy now. I thought that those would work better. But let's say my boss comes in and he says, no, I don't like those at all. Instead of more info, I want it to say um, learn more. He's the boss. I got to change it. I got to listen to him. I change it to learn more. Um, so let's say that I'm working here in the elements and I lose where this, this element by now is and I can't find it. If I click this arrow here and it will highlight that for me. So now I can see, okay, this is the green button price $11.99. Okay, so this is what I want it to be changing then. Uh, he, he says he wants it to be something like on sale okay so we change that on sale eleven ninety nine, and we could see how they look you could persist these into your source code so essentially if you think about what that means we can bring up our site here we can edit it we can edit the elements which is going to give us access to the styling and the elements of the page and we can change them to say and look like however we want and then we can save it right from there. So it makes editing, designing, changing things really, really easy. I especially like to do it with CSS because you can see how things are gonna be styled and you can get immediate feedback on how that's gonna look. So right now I've made these changes. If I refresh the page, they won't persist. So I'll show you. Now I refresh the page and it goes back to purchase about the book. We don't want that. We want the changes to to stay the way that, that we had them. So I'll, I'll select this element about the book and we'll say, like before, learn more. And purchase ebook 
is going to change to on sale. Now we have the changes that we want to keep. Okay, what we need to do then is go to the sources, and it's going to bring up the sources of our of our source files. So if we go to Finder, it's going to show you this is the folder that I have containing everything, and here's my index, JavaScript, image, fonts, PHP, and here's everything listed right here. So what you want to do is right click and add folder to workspace. It's going to bring up your options here and we're gonna to go to our desktop the site and we're just gonna add that it's gonna ask us for access so we're going to allow and now you can see here we've added into our workspace the folder the same folder so here you have Google Chrome or this is Google Canary serving these files and now I've added these same files here what I can do then is open the index page and you can see just like a text editor Adam or or brackets or, or whatever like whatever text editor you like to use everything is right here so you can see it still says purchase book purchase ebook but remember we wanted to change that we wanted to change that to on sale and then you can see it still says let's see we wanted to do learn more about the book it should be learn more so I've made the changes that we want to persist and you'll see the star showing up here which means that this file is edited but not saved and just like any regular text editor you can command s to save it's gonna save those files now there's one more thing you need to do before the changes will persist to your source code and that is to select map to file system resource and we're just going to select the file that I made the changes to after we do that we can refresh the page and you can see now that the changes will persist now that we have that resource mapped so any changes that we make now will persist to our source files if we wanted to make uh, additional changes we could change this from Swiss to we could make it German books and we can make the price $191 and then you'll notice the asterisk will come here indicating that we have changes that are not saved command s to save the changes and once then I refresh on the screen you'll be able to see the changes immediately the price and the uh, change of the title so we can now instantly make the changes and they're going to persist to our local storage once once we have this mapping done here in the sources okay and, and right now we're just changing some buttons but you can change your navigation you can change your color scheme you can change uh, all of these different elements on the page just as if you're using a text editor this gives you very uh, powerful editing tool now we've been spending most of our time in the elements tab and in the sources tab and that's how we've been working with the page and interacting with the page elements there's a lot of functionality that come with dev tools the console probably most people are already using to debug their JavaScript but you also have the network and the timeline and other tabs as well with the network you can see a measure of the performance of the network and with the timeline you can see the performance of rendering so if you're looking to maybe increase the speed of your website and you want to examine the critical rendering path it's a good idea to start in the timeline and everything here is uh, color coded. You have the media files in green, uh, script scripting is in yellow, HTML is in blue, where the time is being spent in rendering your page and painting your page. So we can always record a new test here by clicking record and then refreshing the page and then clicking stop. And that's going to bring up everything that was recorded.
recorded during that page refresh and you could see out of the active time here we'll select that this is what was happening when our page was being rendered and we could see what is happening where is the time being spent so as you can see there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and with the Chrome or any dev tools you can really get a good look under the hood um, of your website and see what's going on and and how long things are taking and if something's bottlenecking and and how you can improve the speed of the network and the speed of the site being rendered and painted to the screen if you're not familiar with dev tools you definitely want to check out the course they have at code school um, given by Greg Pollock he's an excellent uh, instructor he, he goes through everything it's an older course I believe but it is it is pretty good you can see they have the course levels here where they go over the elements sources console debugging network profiles memory so basically most of just the, the tabs that you've seen here uh, they'll he'll basically walk through each one and explain some of the um, tips and tricks and everything so if you're not familiar with dev tools or maybe you just need a refresher this is a course at quote school and it is free so it doesn't cost anything to take this course um, as of the, the time of this video that I'm making. Um, but it's been free for a while. Um, there's other resources out there as well. Google is very good about giving you resources if you see something, if we're working in the network and we can see um, that something is taking a long time. We want to figure out what's going on. You could probably tell what this is. Um, just this, this Kindle graphic here. Um, where is it at? Okay, Kindle, and that's what's taking uh, 500 milliseconds. So if we wanted to know more about this object, we could always get an explanation here. Google is very good about providing a very extensive documentation. If you were troubleshooting a site, you want your site to be running faster, this is probably the, the best place um, to be in the network and the timeline and see what's happening under the hood and where things are slowing down. So. This has just been a, a brief overview of the of the dev tools. Primarily what we were looking at was making changes in the browser and then persisting those changes to our local source files. I would encourage you to pick a browser that you use regularly, um, pick a browser that you're comfortable with, and become familiar with the dev tools or maybe any um, extensions. I know Chrome has a couple dev tool extensions. Um, Firefox does as well. They have the Firebug or Jitterbug, something extension. There is a bit of a learning curve um, when you're when you're first using them. Of course, it's it's something that that's new, and I think a lot of people think that they can just skip it and they don't really have to worry about it too much. Maybe use it for some JavaScript debugging, uh, but not really much else. At least that's how I looked at it when I you know first started getting into developing. But the more I found out about the power behind DevTools, the more I found out that it can really help me and then the, the, obviously then the more I want to learn about it and I want to see you know what's possible and, and what do these tools what kind of features do the tools come with so it's something that you definitely want to check out you want to explore more on and I highly recommend reading up or watching videos or getting comfortable using the dev tools and as you start to use them I think that you'll see they do have a lot of value and then hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of that value. So this has been this week's video and thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week.